We're back here working on the 350 Pontiac again, and we got started going on the valve job. These are the original valves that we took out of this engine, and the tips of the valves are worn out, the valve stems themselves are worn out. Um, the face aren't terrible, but they're still bad enough that we don't want to reuse them in our valve job here on these heads. These are what the valves look like um, that we're going with. They're a stainless valve, a uh, performance valve from Engine Pro, which we sell quite a few of. These valves are each about 110 thousandths larger than the stock valve is on the uh, head diameter. What you run into on a head like this with a block that has a pretty small bore size um, relative to everything here is you would end up actually just shrouding the valve so much that you actually get worse airflow even though you've gone to a much bigger valve. So what we're gonna be doing is actually splitting the difference and we're gonna be modifying the valves to have a little bit smaller head diameter than the way they come, but it's not gonna be so big that we think we're gonna have um, too much shrouding there and they should come out really nice. All right, Dad, this is probably the only machine in the shop that I still don't know how to run at this point, and it's usually meant for grinding crank grinders, not valves, but can you walk us through what you're doing here? We've gotta get these valves ground down a little bit smaller diameter than what they are now, and our valve refacer will grind the face of the valve, but it won't grind the outside diameter of the valve to make it smaller. So I'm gonna do that here in the crankshaft grinder. And like Nicholas said, this machine is not intended to do this, but with a little bit of ingenuity here, I think we can make it work for us. So I've made a little jig there that will hold the, the valve in the chuck because the chucks themselves won't go small enough. Actually, I used an old valve guide with a slit down the side uh, to act as a collet. And I've got my valve in, and looks like we're running just darn near perfectly true here. So I'm going to come up against it with the steady rest, just put a little, just snug up a little bit, move off to the side here from the wheel, bring the wheel in, turn on a little bit of coolant. And I'm going to slowly come over across the face of the wheel. And I'm doing this slow just in case I haven't backed off enough. But I'm, see there, you can see I'm just barely grinding as I come in. Which is fine. As long as it's not excessive. So with that, I'll keep a little stick room on the, a little pressure on the steady rest. And I'll bring the wheel in. I've got my stop set from the first valve I did that I actually measured. And I should be able to come in and make each one of them exactly the same. This will take a few seconds. I don't want to push anything here. At this point, I've got 50 thousandths left to go. Ten. Five. Three. Two. One. And spark out. Back the wheel away from the valve. Back the wheel completely off, and it should be finished. I'm going to put just a little lubrication on this steady rest so I can keep it moving. I'm going to do a little bit of hand work here with the cutoff wheel. <coughs> that little bit, just put a nice camper on the edge of that bell. Looks brand new. So can we compare that valve to... So we're not we're not changing the dimension a lot. What would we decide we're taking off? Uh, 60 thousandths? Yeah, thereabouts. I can't remember right off, but you can see there how much it's changed. And then we'll go back, like you said, with our valve refacer, and we'll put a new uh, angle on there, because obviously you can see that's 
uh, very, very thin at this point, and we'll show you that process here in a minute. Here's a look at our stock intake valve. You know, as you can see, quite a bit smaller than the performance intake valve that we're gonna be using as our starting point for our custom valves on this. So again, we are gonna be increasing the diameter of the valves a little bit, but not excessively to the point that we would have to if we just put these valves in as they sit. Because again, um, you know, people picture bigger valves, that means more airflow, that's better, right? Well, in this case, because of the size of the bore and the way the combustion chamber is designed and everything on these heads, um, you might actually end up with less airflow if you just stuffed a huge valve in there. So we're trying to split the difference a little bit so that we don't sacrifice any airflow with our shrouding, but um, still increasing them a little bit. We'll have. I was coming to order just about ready to hit the front of the wheel and some relay question that. <laughs> I think it looks good. We've got just a little bit of additional size over the stock. And by the time you grind your angles back on there, I think that valve will work just fine. Just fine or perfect? Just fine. <laughs> I don't want to get cocky and have something go wrong saying it's perfect. Have you ever ground valves on a crankshaft grinder before? Uh, I'm sure I probably had a probably have over the years, but I don't recall. <laughs> 2035. Is that okay for you? Yeah. We initially tried this without the steady rest, but the, the valve is, the stem is flimsy enough that it started chattering and vibrating. So we have to, uh, go ahead and use the steady rest. Do you know how they do this in the factory? How do they turn the outside edge? I'm sure that's done in a, uh, some sort of a, a lathe. I'm sure with way better cutting tools than anything we could imagine having here in our level shop when they're doing it on big production runs. When they get down to finishing the face of the valve, that is still ground, just like what we do. But from the looks of the valve, I can see uh, the marks on it where it's obviously been turned in some kind of a lathe type machine. And I just need to take that sharp edge off. <laughs> all it takes. Now before I put these valves in the valve refacer and put our angles on them, um, you know our face angle, I wanted to go ahead and double check for sure that we had these valves um, at a point where they are small enough and we're not going to have any clearance issues with the cylinder bores because like I said this is a smaller bore engine. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've put two of our valves in, um, both an exhaust and an intake valve, and I've gone ahead and put the test springs on them and the dial indicator so that we can run this, or you know, press the, compress the valves and get them down and see how much clearance we have to the block itself. So again, the valves have not been cut yet, the seats have not been cut yet, and we also have no head gasket in here, so we'll have an extra 40 thousandths from anything that we um, find. And as you can see, um, the intake valve has plenty of room in here at the dimension that we've got it set to. I don't think we're gonna have any issues there by the time we get um, you know, the valves in the head where they're supposed to be. But on the exhaust valve, we are kind of close. Um, so we wanted to do a little bit closer checking. We've got everything laid out as it would be other than the fact that we haven't done our valve job yet. Or I've done the, all of the guides, but I haven't done the seats yet. Kind of what we're looking at here, on this exhaust valve, since it's close, we wanna kinda of get an idea of our clearance. And we know that we're gonna have um, around 465 thousandths valve lift 
on our camshaft. I get the dial indicator so it's reading 500 thousandths lift and then we're going to take a look on the inside and see how well our clearance is. So what you can see there is about an extra 45 thousandths lift on top of what our camshaft is going to be and like I said we're going to have the valve a little bit further up in the head by the time we cut the seat as well as the fact that we're going to have a 40 thousandths thick head gasket. So we are more than comfortable with the clearance we have in there. So that was just what we wanted to double check before we go ahead and move forward with our valves at the dimension they are. Obviously when we're assembling this engine we're also going to have to check our piston to valve clearance but we're pretty comfortable with where everything's at right now so we're going to go ahead and move forward. At this point we've gone ahead and we're going to be putting our new face on these valves that we've modified to be a smaller diameter. So here's kind of what it looked like right out of the crankshaft grinder and here's the new face that I've put on one as I have been starting the valve job over there. Um, so I went ahead and got this one, got the face ground on it um, so that we could you know, figure out where it needed to be and where the valve seats needed to be cut to to get us our correct valve spring installed height. Um, so at this point, on this machine, there's a little dial over here that allows you to see um, how far you've pulled the valve into or out of the stone basically to get an idea of how many thousandths of an inch um, you're grinding off. So I've kind of set a zero over there using this valve as our example and we'll go through and we'll grind the other eight exhaust valves to match. On the exhaust valves I had a lot of material to grind off of each valve to get them where I wanted them and with this much grinding the stone was getting pretty rough by the end of it so I actually decided to rough them all in before dressing the stone once um, just so that I had a real nice finish on that stone to bring them the last few thousandths of an inch to our finished set dimension so that they had a really really nice face on them. By doing this it also helped ensure that our face to tip length was very close across all eight valves um, using that stop that I had set on the machine and we also opted to add a 30 degree back cut to the exhaust valves. Using some color I was able to see where the 60 thousandths wide seat was contacting the face of the valve allowing me to grind the first valve's back cut to keep that contact point in the center of the 45 degree face where I set a stop on the machine to make the other seven valves match. We're back getting our intake uh, intake valves kind of finalized because I still had to grind a little bit more off the face there and along with that kind of going through doing the valve job kind of at the same time to make sure the seats and the valves come out where we want them to be to have our correct um, installed spring height and at this point we're going to go through, through the same process of grinding a little bit of material off of the face of our intake valves um, luckily we don't have to do as much as we did on the exhaust because honestly that took a ton of time and it was just getting pretty tiring and just kind of tedious um, so looks like you know as far as the feed wheel here we have to take about eight thousandths off um, to get the face on the valves the way I want it to be um, and you know here's kind of a finished product I've got some color on there so it's kind of hard to tell but that's kind of where we're gonna start with these last seven Like I said, I'm not a Pontiac expert. I just know that with what we were coming up with, with the combination we needed, um, we were not having any luck finding um, the valves for these heads from our usual manufacturer. From the looks of it, this casting was only used in 1968 in the two barrel 350 Pontiac. So I don't know if it's just enough of an oddball that they didn't make the right valve or um, you know, maybe the valve that was in it that we were comparing to wasn't the right valve it's hard to say but at the end of the day um, you know we're happy with what we did we took the engine pro valves we've got just a straight 30 degree angle on the intake and a 45 degree angle on the exhaust with a 30 degree back cut and I've got the valve job done I think everything came out really nice I'm just taking some final measurements um, just to make sure that everything comes out the way I thought it did. But again, like I said, we were able to, you know, open these up a little bit, but like we checked in the video, we're not going to have any issues with the valves being completely shrouded or anything like that by the cylinder. There's enough clearance and 
I'm just really happy with the way these turned out. Um, I think this is going to make a really nice little engine for our customer here. So pretty happy about it. And if you guys are interested in seeing the valve job video, obviously stay tuned. It'll come in another week. I know, I'm sorry, I, I have the videos recorded. I just don't have time during the week to edit the videos. So I edit them on Friday afternoon or Friday night or even sometimes Saturday night, Sunday morning, um, you know, at like 3 a.m. before I post them on Sundays. So if you wanna see what we do on these heads, um, stay tuned for next week. It'll either be the block video or the head video, I'm not sure. Thanks for watching.